One more. Yes, sir. You have appeared 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, isn't it? Yes, sir. Okay, okay. Very nice. But um, you have taken geography optional. Why? Um, because I felt there are uh, some similarities between civil engineering and geography. Between? Civil engineering and geography. Ah, so what is the similarity? Um, uh, there are uh, uh, in the aspects of uh, soil. Uh, and also about urban planning, uh, we learn in civil engineering as well as in geography also. So I felt uh, it will be easier for me to grasp geography and it will also help in uh, general studies papers also. Okay. How shall geography be helpful in general administration? Uh, geography can be helpful in various aspects. Uh, one, as I earlier mentioned, it's about the urban planning. Um, it can uh, contribute to various aspects such as uh, um, planning of the cities, uh, uh, then about the market locations, all these analysis we can uh, do it and uh, geography has great application. And also about the um, forecasting of weather, um, in all these aspects geography play a very important role. That's why you have, but in that case you should have read geography. Pardon, sir. Have you read geography in your in your college days? No, sir. I did civil engineering. Okay. In that case, you should have read geography. If you are so interested in geography, that would be easier. I started developing interest towards civil services only when I was in college. Okay, okay, okay. What are your hobbies? Uh, my hobbies are uh, cooking. cooking. Yes. Acha, cooking. Singing and listening to light music. Yes, sir. You have learnt music? Uh, I have learnt uh, when I was very young, but then uh, I did not get the opportunity to continue my classical lessons. Achha, uh, you listen to, listen to what music. kind of music? Light music. Local music or uh, vocal or music? music also? Hindi, everything, all languages, sir. Um, Hindi, Malayalam, Tamil, all languages. Can you tell me the basic difference? between the Carnatic system and the Hindustani system? Um, in Carnatic system? Very elementary question. I am not going to the depth of it. Okay, sir. Um, in Carnatic system, uh, we have this ragam, talam, pallavi. Uh, there are various notes and ragam. Yes. And uh, the singing is very much confined to that raga. Uh, you don't have much of uh, extensions and uh, um, uh, kind of... Uh, um, improvisations being done in uh, Carnatic music and uh, the instruments used for Carnatic music is also different such as uh, we example we use uh, Rudra Veena uh, for uh, Carnatic uh, music and in the case of uh, uh, Hindustani music uh, it has influence of uh, Arabic and uh, Islamic uh, uh, Kavali um, uh, origin is there a kind of influence is there in Hindustani music. Who is, the, who is that man? Who are the greatest influence on Hindustani music? Um, I'm I have a heard the name of Amir Khusro. Amir Khusro, yes sir. Sorry sir, I couldn't recollect. Okay, okay. Uh, would you tell us something on Green Revolution? Sir? Green Revolution. Uh, green Revolution? Uh, happened in the 1960s of uh, 1960s 70s period uh, at that point of time um, India was not self-sufficient in agriculture especially yes. the food grains yes. uh, so in order to increase the production and also to reduce the dependency on imports um, MS Swaminathan who is considered as the father of uh, green revolution uh, with his uh, assistance or advice um, uh, they came up with, uh, the government came up with the Green Revolution. What about Norman Burlak? Um, he, is, uh, he is considered to be the father of Green Revolution at international level. International level, okay. Have you come across a book or read a book called The Population Bomb by Paul Elric? No, sir. Because in that book, okay, sir. he challenged that we will have all Malthusian deaths. Okay, sir. To whom? This, this gentleman gave the reply. 
And then he withdrew his opinion that yes, my earlier theory is wrong and oh. now the food problem of the world is solved. Okay. When Norman Burla found that small um, variety of wheat, okay, he said that the food problem of the world has been solved. Okay, so he retracted from his earlier view. Okay. So what are the effects of green revolution in India? Um, the positive aspects are that uh, uh, there was significant increase in the food production, okay. especially the uh, rice wheat um, uh, cultivation in the northern tracts of India. Uh, and uh, we became self-sufficient in food grain cereals. Um, uh, but the negative aspect of it yes. is, uh, uh, one thing is uh, our uh, crop pattern has changed because we are nowadays we are depending uh, dependent more on cereals rather than coarse grains which are more nutritious and uh, 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 that is one thing and uh, another aspect is uh, we have uh, increased the usage of chemical pesticides uh, and uh, chemical fertilizers which have further degraded the soil quality so we are facing the problem now yes what is the problem now uh, now, evergreen revolution is the... No, in Punjab, the groundwater has gone down. Yes, sir. Because Punjab is an area of less rain. Yes, sir. So, if you have agriculture there, it needs more rain. So, the groundwater has gone, the groundwater is depleted, the highest in Punjab, leading to arsenic, etc. Yes, sir. Okay, that's the major thing. Then, another thing is that, we are, we are cultivating uh, sugar cane in Maharashtra, yes, which should not be done. There should be a change. Yes. Why? Because Maharashtra is a less rainy, less water. Drought area. prone region. Okay, so sugarcane should be in UP and Bihar because they are, Bihar is full of rivers. Yes. So it should be there. Instead of that, it is in Maharashtra. So these yes. are uh, basic changes that have to be made. Yes. Okay, take it, please. Uh, since we are told about urban <coughs> planning and geography has helped you to understand that, what do you think are the similarities between this Indus Valley civilization uh, town planning? And uh, today's urban planning? Um, in the Indus Valley uh, town planning, they followed the grid pattern system uh, where uh, the roads connect to each other at right angles. That is being even now followed in several cities. For example, Chandigarh, uh, which is a well planned city, also has grid pattern. The second thing is about the sewerage uh, system, uh, which, was, uh, um, uh, which was found in Indus Valley civilization with uh, manholes and all that facilities that has been also uh, followed in today's uh, uh, city planning concept. Uh, then uh, uh, about the core centric model that is you will have a, uh, some, uh, some kind of a uh, religious institution or market or something in the core and uh, uh, the development will be based on the core. So that that is also being followed in the today's uh, city models. So you are saying the periphery areas are underdeveloped in today's yes. cities also? Yes, sir. Uh, and then since you had also said about this urban planning, suppose you are uh, in charge of like say uh, Bangalore or Mumbai town planning and all. Yes. What do you, uh, how do you intend to remove the decongestion in the cities? Like say Bangalore, Mumbai, all this has like are heavily overcrowded. Yes, sir. How do you think of the, how do you think would be the best option of decongesting? Um, one of the best options is to provide satellite cities, accommodate satellite cities and providing development in the peripheral regions so that the commuting uh, will be reduced. Uh, at the same time, the facilities will be provided in the peripheral regions also. So in that way, we can reduce the decongestion to a greater extent. Uh, so then about uh, even like housing and all, if it's too far away from the, like all the workplaces are in the core of the city. The like residents are very far. Yes. So how do you Im intend to improve transportation such that in Bangalore there is uh, like four or five hours commuting time every day? That's what uh, I've heard. So how all this can be reduced? Like not just the like uh, what to say the spreading over, but how to also reduce the commuting time? Um, another thing is to uh, promote uh, uh, suburban trains and uh, metro rail uh, systems. So that can also help in uh, commuting from one place to another. Um, and uh, but uh, there are challenges of land acquisition and other aspects. So when you are so answering, look to everybody. Okay, sir. Or not to the person who asks. Look to everybody. Okay, okay sir. Huh? Okay, sir. Uh, so these feasibility of such things have to be considered. So what are the authorities which have to work in tandem 
to make this happen like you said metro then suburban trains yes and municipality all this so what are the agencies and how do they how should they work in tandem in order to uh, like make these plans work into reality like happen into like actually um, um nowadays there is a talk of uh, having uh, urban uh, metropolitan transport authority umta uh, so th 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 the major intention is to unify all the transport systems of the city so such authorities should be established so that there will be good coordination among the system and you had uh, in your hobbies you have said one of your hobbies is like uh, to cook the forgotten recipes of our country yes so do you think that uh, tribals can be given employment by uh, employing them in these hotels or eateries and uh, by this will the forgotten recipes become mainstream in the in cities or like in common like populous yes sir uh, that can be a part of eco tourism concept uh, where we can uh, introduce tribal recipes also uh, into the uh, mainstream main courses uh, that can attract tourists and that can also help in generating uh, how can this be done any uh, like act, what should be the point of act, plan of action for doing this? um we should uh, get the help of ngos which are working uh, very closely with such tribal groups and uh, we we should be able to create awareness to them that is uh, what kind of recipes to be made and how to how they should be in integrated into this uh, no do you think they should make they should be migrated to the cities to in order to do this like i mean bringing recipes or just take the recipes from them and uh, the the city people themselves can do the cooking what do you um initially uh, they should be uh, as i earlier mentioned uh, under this eco tourism concept they can be employed in hotels and uh, resorts which are within their uh, premise itself and then later on uh, there will be a kind of uh, awareness or uh, um a knowledge transmission through which uh, these uh, recipes could get spread into the urban areas and cities But what is the requirement of eco tourism for this it can be done just like that what how does tourism yes. come into the <laughs> otherwise also it can it can be promoted in various ways uh, uh, but the thing is they they are very tribals are very much uh, uh, accustomed to vulnerable environment Uh, so it is better to provide employment at that level itself and uh, your native is from kerala your native place yes, is kerala sir. so what do you have to say about this shabarimala issue um regarding the temple court verdict yes, and uh, it's after math and this year uh, kerala government it said they can't provide protection to women devotees who are coming yes sir so what is your take on all this uh, whether uh, women entry should be allowed or whether state should provide protection because uh, like if attacks are happening on pilgrims it's an attack on the state or it's an attack on the supreme court verdict yes sir so what is your take on it um i believe uh, um, everybody every individual has the right to religion according to our constitution article 20 uh, 25 has given that right uh, so uh, definitely women of all um, age irrespective of uh, age should be allowed to enter the temple and uh, the government should also deploy adequate forces and security should be provided for the women who are interested in entering the temple but do you think it's a place where active activism can be displayed brazenly like most of the pilgrims who come they flaunt that yes we have visited we have violated the law is that the intention or is devotion to the lord that is the intention behind visiting this place um both can be there um i mean the spiritual uh, part is also there at the same time there are activists who wanted to show that uh, there there should not be any kind of gender discrimination so there should be given uh, state protection and all yes sir also. Uh, yes sir okay and uh, coming to this thing uh, your first preference is ias yes sir then after that all your preferences are irs uh, it then indian audit and account and then irs customs but neither your optional like or your background that is your graduation it is in economics or accounts or finance none of these subjects then do you think suppose you are allotted uh, like irs either it or customs or this indian audit and account you will be able to do justice to these services um these three services because they are all interrelated uh, uh, i i believe uh, services they are 
uh, highly generalized in nature. Only when you get into the service, you have the training and uh, uh, through training, I believe I can pick up the knowledge on the particular service. And what is the reason for this, like uh, despite it being from different background, like not the accounts related background? Yes. You have chosen like IRS, like after IRS. Um, uh, I have respect and regard for all the services. Um, uh, but I believe nowadays there is lot of opportunity in the field of uh, 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 revenue services uh, because India is also planning to become a dollar 5 trillion economy. So that is why I have given second preference for IRSIT. Okay, sir. Uh, yes. Please. Hello, sir. You have uh, an interest in uh, <coughs> The welfare of differently abled people? Yes, sir. So, what type of activities you are engaged in? Um, I had been part of the organization for the past uh, three to four years. Um, uh, so, I have helped in uh, editing the articles written by uh, differently abled people. Uh, and uh, at the same time, the organization is also taking a lot of efforts to improve the recreational activities for differently abled. Uh, for example, uh, there is a sport called Boshia. So we have conducted Boshia game for the differently abled. Um, and at the same time, I have also done um, um, this uh, inclusive campaigning uh, for the, uh, that is for generating, the, uh, generating awareness on rights of persons with disability in various schools. What is this inclusive really stands for? What actually? Uh, what sense? Uh, that is how well they are integrating with the society uh, on physical, social and economic aspects. I work in a college, so uh, I don't find any other students coming uh, in a wheelchair. But at the same time, when I go to an organization like Vidya Sagar here, yes, sir. Where, uh, almost all the students are, you know, the parking, parking area is full of yes, sir. wheelchairs. Why are colleges are not accessible to people with uh, physical disabilities? Um, f first of all, uh, the, the, there should be ramps to be provided. Uh, that is physical accessibility, especially in colleges are lacking. And uh, another problem what uh, the physically disabled people are facing is the mobility, transportation problem to reach the colleges also. So, on that aspects, we need to work well. Look at the trains, our suburban trains or yes. our uh, uh, local transport facilities. Very often, people with uh, you know, uh, physical disabilities have no access to this. Yes, sir. Do you have any suggestion to improve this condition? Yes, sir. Currently, um, there is no physical disabled coaches in trains. Um, uh, so, we, we have given um, a request to the railway authorities. Uh, to have physically disabled friendly coaches, uh, especially in the suburban trains as well as in passenger coaches also. More than physical uh, facilities, sometimes our attitude towards people have uh, uh, physical deformities or yes, sir. disabilities. Sometimes you have to make changes there. At the same time, we have uh, uh, competitions like uh, uh, beauty patients yes, sir. Uh, or modeling. Yes, sir. How will you look at these two aspects of our social life? The one side, a type of you know, body or idea of beauty is projected. We have competitions and people participate. Where we have a protest against, the ones we are in Bangalore, some protest against some fashion. Uh, other than that, our mainstream conception of an ideal body is not a disabled body, but rather a body. Yes. We have a special conception of it. The change, to change the attitude of the people towards people with the disabilities, what can what is your opinion? Um, the best thing is to uh, generate awareness on uh, the problems of disability and their rights uh, from the school level itself. And nowadays we can even see lot of changes in the attitude of the people also. Uh, because especially in the case of beauty pageants, uh, they are not looking for the physical beauty. Uh, but also a lot of uh, activities related uh, um, uh, things are also taking place, events are also and weightage is given for such things too. Uh, so uh, I hope within 
uh, uh, within some considerable amount of time there will be change of change in attitude and uh, a lot of uh, opportunities will be provided for the people with disabled thank you thank, thank you, you. Uh, I want the uh, explanation of this term urban naxals, which is recently in usage. Um, uh, naxals are people who are uh, um, who who don't believe in this government establishment. They are uh, they wanted to topple the government. That is the basic intention. And the people who are in urban areas and supporting the uh, Naxal ideology and also creating awareness or creating a kind of uh, um, awareness on Naxalism to um, the youth, especially the youth in the urban regions are called as urban Naxalites. So what is this Naxalism? It's against government, it's split. Uh, it is uh, against the establishment and uh, they wanted to establish a classless society. Classless. Classless society. So, uh, what, why is Thailand in news today? What has happened in Thailand? Um, not able to recollect. Not able to recollect. Uh, what's special about uh, Feb 11th, 2020 with respect to Delhi? Day after tomorrow. Um, I'm I'm sorry, ma'am. No. Sure. Uh, are you aware of the uh, KAD excavation? Which, yes, ma'am. Which has taken place. So, uh, what do you think you were discussing more about the uh, urban planning? and uh, the issues which is linking both civil engineering and geography. So what has the scared excavation given an information about uh, the, the spillover information of the uh, urbanization? Um, the same kind of uh, uh, the, the remnants what we uh, got from Indus Valley civilization in the same way um, the archaeologists have uh, um, explored um, uh, the remnants of Kiradi and uh, they have come to a conclusion that uh, urbanization even existed in south um, with almost all the uh, facilities just like that of Indus Valley civilization, um, the bricks which have been used during Kiradi, all these uh, remnants have been explored and uh, studies are going on regarding that. Um. We have a new quota system from 2019 about uh, economically weaker section. Yes, ma'am. So, uh, do you think, <laughs> apart from the existing quotas, this also is required? Um, it, it is required because uh, we are considering the economic criteria also. Um, um, so, uh, can you trade off with the ones which is religiously or caste-based quotas which were offered? and it could be traded off with the economic weaker section. You opt for that option or do you prefer the coexistence of both the uh, quotas? Uh, there should be coexistence of both the quotas because uh, uh, the social and educationally backward communities, uh, they are being historically they are uh, facing um, uh, oppressions, they, they have faced it. So, uh, in order for the upliftment of such communities, it is highly essential uh, to provide employment opportunities and uh, educational opportunities for such community. At the same time, uh, even for the uh, other backward communities, we have creamy layer concept. In that concept also, we are taking economic criteria into consideration. So, in the same way, uh, for the uh, upper class uh, uh, community also, there are people who are facing economic, uh, um, um, uh, who, who are not, uh, um, uh, who, who are facing uh, problems, I mean, uh, they are economically not well off. So, uh, providing reservation is highly essential for them. So, uh, my last question is, you were mentioning also about the uh, 
how we could plan the peripheral regions and we could allow the development to take place there. Yes. We could plan for the commutation from the uh, workspace to the peripheral regions. Uh, but recently there is also a, a debate happening that the small cities are fast growing. Small cities are growing at a faster pace and it's much more urbanized. Okay. At a higher exponential rate. So it's the spillover impact is not a gradual impact but it's much faster. So yes, what why do you prefer the smaller cities or the peripheral regions to be uh, impacted? At least that was safeguarded. Um. Uh, th that is because uh, the intention is to have a uniform kind of development mm. uh, so that uh, um, uh, this congestions, mm. uh, pollution, all these things could be reduced to a greater extent. Are you aware of this land use, land cover changes in civil engineering, geography, you must have heard of this. Uh, land patterns. Land yes, patterns and the changes which in yes, So if you continue to develop horizontally, changing the ecosystems, you will be missing out the different land use patterns which should be preserved. Okay. Okay. So, don't always be in support of moving to a peripheral region which okay. may finally lead us to missing out the ecosystems. Yes ma'am. There should be a balance between yeah. the environment and... Uh, Kerala Assembly, an unanimous resolution has decided not to follow the CAA. Yes, ma'am. And uh, the government of Kerala has approached the Supreme Court against CAA under one particular class of the article. What was that article? Article 113. 31. 31. What does Article 131 say? Louder, louder. I am not able to hear what was it. Louder. Article 131. Yes. Um, uh, uh, that is. Uh, the states can have their own uh, expression and uh, uh, it should not be bound by the center. Okay. Um, that is, the uh, states can have their own expression uh, and they are not bound to um, go by the directions of the center. Okay. Okay. Now, coming back to this uh, uh, famous Sabarimala issue. Yes. Sir. You know that uh, review petitions were filed, Sabarimala. Yes, sir. Along with Sabrimala issue, a few other uh, petitions uh, regarding the uh, specific religious practices of uh, Boras and uh, Farsis have also yes, come. Now, uh, the review, but the, the Supreme Court, uh, headed by the Chief Justice, uh, uh, has not admitted uh, uh, the review petitions. Uh, the arguments took place on the maintainability of the petitions. Because uh, the uh, uh, India's uh, uh, the most senior most uh, jurist and uh, lawyer Falinariman has raised an uh, important question uh, regarding the uh, very decision of referring the earlier Sabarimala judgment to a nine judgment. What was uh, Falinariman's main argument? I mean, to a very narrow specific issue. Sorry, sir, I don't remember. Connect with your state. Okay. Tell me, this, uh, you know, these review petitions, you know, how this system works. First judgment, then review petitions, then finally curative petitions. That's how the system works. Yes, sir. Now, this Sabrimala case, uh, the issue, it was first uh, judgment was given by a five judge bench. Then, uh, uh, near after that, uh, the court developed can go far as a cold feet and uh, said that it is going to refer it to a seven judgment. Now later it almost comes to a nine judgment. Now Nariman is saying that uh, there are at least six Supreme Court judgments uh, in independent India's history which said that uh, you can't refer a review petition to a larger bench. Okay, sir. Only the, as far as the numerical strength of the bench is, the composition of the bench is concerned, it should be the same which gave the judgment. judgment. Okay, sir. This was his basic argument, which was contested by the government. Okay, sir. So, on this narrow down specific uh, arguments took place yesterday, that is whether to, whether the court has power, the Supreme, the Supreme Court has got powers to 
refer its own judgment uh, when when it came as a review petition to a larger bench. Okay, sir. That's a very, very important uh, issue. Okay, sir. Just keep this yes, in mind. Yes, sir. You know what happened there. Okay, now, uh, com again coming back to the first one, uh, can a state government uh, refuse to say that it won't follow a law, a central law, passed by the parliament? Because census is a state in a st uh, union subject, yes, not a state subject. Yes, sir. The, there is a census act and that census department comes under the union home ministry. Every once in 10 years we are taking census that is for yes. all along, even yes. before independence. Now, how far it is correct that uh, for your state to go to Supreme Court uh, on this? Um, the state is bound to, uh, uh, bound to follow the directions of the center and especially when uh, a subject is in the central list, then the state doesn't have any say. But definitely the states have got the right to freedom of expression. So if they have found something is not uh, uh, abiding by the constitutional principles and if it is going, uh, if it is violating the constitutional principles, then the state has got every right to file a, um, uh, uh, to take legal procedure to file a case in the Supreme Court. What's your view on death sentence? Death sentences. Now this Nirbhaya case. Yes. The death sentences, the execution of four convicts. Yes, sir. Is getting delayed, delayed, and delayed. Even the black warrants issued are stayed, and again the ball has been back once again to this. In your view, death sentences are correct ethically. Um. I believe death sentence cannot act as a deterrence um, because even after for any crime, for any crime, um, uh, even after uh, uh, um, giving capital punishment, there are instances of uh, um, violation of uh, law and order, uh, especially in the case of rapes and uh, um, terrorist attacks and all that. Uh, but still, in order, in, in order to see the security of the nation as such, um, uh, we need to have capital punishment uh, and it should be given only for rarest of the rare cases, uh, as said by Bachan Singh case in uh, Supreme Court. Who is to decide it's the rarest of rare case? It's purely subject. Yes, the, it should be well codified by a, um, what, what amounts to rarest of the rare should be well codified by the Supreme Court. Can you uh, justify death sentences for rapes? Is in as per your own argument? Yes. Does rapes comes under rarest of rare, rare case or not? Uh, rape will not. Because come women's under groups across the country yes, are opposing death sentences for rapes. Yes, sir. On what basis they are opposing it? Uh, that may result into murdering of the victim, particular victim, because anyway, uh, if. Uh, uh, if death sentence is the punishment for the uh, rape perpetrators, then uh, it can result in death of the victim. So, so this women's group have no objection in awarding death sentences to other case? Um, only in cases where there is no chance of reformation. Who is to decide that uh, you can't reform a person? Uh, that has to be decided by um, See, you look at it like this, an animal goes berserk, a tiger or lion. Yes. And what we are doing, we are not shooting it. To the maximum extent, we are using the darts, we are tranquilizing it and we are letting it either in a forest or we are caging it in a zoo. If that's the law for an animal, how can you kill a human being? After all, Gandhiji said an eye for an eye makes the whole world blind. Yes, sir. And how will you justify Bachchan Singh's judgment? Um, in certain aspects like terrorist attacks where the security of the nation is under compromise, in such cases… And you are saying that only under terrorist attacks the, the death sentences can be given. Um, and murders coming under the other category of personal motives and other things, the, those case, in those cases death sentences should not be given. Uh, I like believe that. in that, sir. That's your view? Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay, sir. Mm -hmm. you Speaking is good. Yes, sir. Some good answers are given, like when he asked uh, why 
what this is to behave you told the right mm -hmm. that in the, to to abolish the evidence you may commit the murders there also yes, right sir. then murder so that because punishment is same for both that was the real reason yes another reason for the giving a when you award a death sentence the court are very reluctant okay sir the courts show utmost uh, sympathy not sympathy but utmost care to see my the the evidence required for giving a death sentence is much higher than life sentence yes. both are same okay so that's another reason so that the courts are very reluctant to give death sentence in the lower level okay but you said that uh, it is well codified by supreme court rarest of the rare uh, it has to be codified as such no there is some codification okay sir because in that bachan singh case they said rarest of the rare then they also said a balance sheet theory the uh, mitigating circumstances and the aggravating circumstances that they have said okay sir. two days back hindu that's the editorial two ladies have written that article well alright it was written four five years back how in nirbhay case the mitigating circumstances have not been taken into account mitigating circumstances are those circumstances which reduce the crime reduce the gravity of the crime yes it's illiterate if they worked under uh, their social system uh, from their life etc they belong to a lower class all their mitigating circumstances aggravating the, the the cruelty of the crime and after committing the after committing the murder if you dismember the body they are all the gruesome more it makes the murder more gruesome okay so aggravating circumstances and mitigating circumstances must be balanced okay. then only you can come to a conclusion rare so the rare is not in number not one or two in a year or five in a year they can 20 in a year okay. but it is in the group it is in the in the nature of the crime the gravity yes. of the crime gravity. okay so rare so it means that it is regarding the crime not actually the number okay so we could have given so many on on this uh, rare rest of the rare and the balance is good okay sir uh, please uh, my opinion is like it's like my opinion uh, supreme court has said that women devotees should be allowed in shabarimala but it's no place for activism it has been told so you said even activists should be allowed to like non their activism that i feel uh, like it can be avoided like the for devotion it's for devotional purposes religious purposes okay so that you can and uh, after sir told also you have not seen everyone that has to be <laughs> i'm not you used to that, that person you heard yes sir i will i'll try to rectify that <laughs> okay first we need to eleventh is the delhi election delhi election <laughs> result, yes sir thailand see the newspaper what has happened I, okay yeah. there was a shooting in a mall okay ma'am But persons have twenty one. Oh yes, killed twenty one persons. Twenty one people were killed. Usually, yes. Corona virus might be an important issue because yes. Kerala has that yes. three four instances. Yes, sir. You have brought it to India. <laughs> <laughs> And in all cases, bats, bats are having those viruses. Bats. Both Ebola, uh, Nipah last year, and now Corona virus. Corona. And M E R also. Yes. Sir. All are by bats. <laughs> Today you have seen Hindu. Yes. Sir. You see right. the frequently asked questions in the towards the last page. Beautiful article on coronavirus. Yes. Read that because because you belong to Kerala and the the part of this is Kerala, so read that. And coronavirus any day is one of the major issues now. Okay. So read that. Many articles are coming, but today's Hindu is very good article. But you are not even near, you know. <laughs> no, sir, I'm not. <laughs> you have to be careful. Mama. <laughs> He's from Kerala, sir. Then we have to be careful. <laughs> Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank All you. the best. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. All the best. Thank you. Is the interview? Twenty seventh, ma'am. Feb. Twenty seventh. All the best.